Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a white, black and a red or Mardu colored mid-range deck built around Kambal, Profiteering Mayor, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. A 3 mana 2-4 says whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your opponent's control, for each of them create a tapped token that's a copy of it and this only triggers once each turn. So Kambal is a pretty decent hate piece against opposing token decks as we now get to make our own tokens in the process and then whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. So Kambal can maybe use that first ability to also start draining the opponent, but of course also triggers off tokens we generate elsewhere, so that's why we have cards like Wedding Announcement and Lord Skitter in the deck, as these can generate a bunch of tokens turn after turn to help drain the opponent as well. Now we're also playing a bunch of cards that give the opponent a token of some variety, including the Generous Plunder, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two with Menace, saying at the beginning of our upkeep we may create a treasure token, if we do the opponent also gets a tapped treasure, and when the plunder attacks it deals damage to the opponent equal to the number of artifacts they control, so that can also increase with the number of treasure tokens they might have. So the treasure tokens already useful in maybe helping cast our 4 drops on turn 3, but now we can also maybe deal more damage with them, and if we have Kambal in play, the opponent getting a treasure token will result in us getting an additional treasure token while also getting drained by one, so that can also add up pretty quickly. And then besides the plunder, we also have four copies of a Blood Vial Purveyor, a 4 mana 5 6 Flying Trample, so pretty decent stats for its mana cost, also lines up pretty well against all the slick shots that are being played in Best of One Standard at the moment. And it does have a weird drawback, saying whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player creates a blood token. So it will end up giving the opponent some blood tokens, which typically you don't want to do since that will grant them additional card selection in the late game. But in this case it actually has a bit of upside as well, because when the purveyor attacks it gets one additional power until end of turn for each blood token the opponent controls so that can also increase over time and sometimes the opponent might be empty handed and then they cannot even sacrifice the blood tokens in the first place since it's part of the additional cost. So now purveyor giving the opponent blood tokens can also help trigger Kambal giving us more blood tokens and draining them and then if we also have a plunder going this can also deal more damage to the opponent for each artifact they control so those blood tokens once again can turn into an upside. And then rounding out the deck, we have two copies of Iganjo Uprising as another way to give the opponent creature tokens in this case. And uh, this will create X, 2-2 two, two white samurai creature tokens with vigilance. They also gain menace and haste until end of turn, whereas the opponent creates X of those tokens minus one. So they also get a significant amount of samurai, but with Kambal in play, we now also get to make that same X minus one additional samurai tokens, even though they will be tapped initially. And then we can also maybe try and break the symmetry of Iganjo Uprising with Wedding Announcement, once it gives our team plus one plus one, our tokens will be a lot better than the opponents. And then we also have two copies of Rankle and Torbran, a card that I haven't seen played in Standard before, a 3-4 for 5 mana with Flying, First Strike and Haste, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player or battle we get to choose any number of modes between each player creates a treasure token, once again a way to synergize with Kambal, each player sacrifices a creature which plays well with all our token makers, and finally if a source would deal damage to a player or battle this turn it deals that much damage plus 2 instead. So once again a nice finishing ability if we're attacking with a whole bunch of tokens, since now our opponent will take a lot more damage in the process, and can also maybe synergize with some of our burn spells, including Lightning Helix, which is also just a great removal spell against the red aggro decks, which are now all over the place. And then we also have two copies of Archangel of Wrath, another payoff for playing the Mardu Colors, as we can maybe doubly kick it to deal some damage, gain some life in the process, so that can also benefit from Rankle dealing damage to the opponent first, as we can now increase that damage by two. And then we have some more spot removal with Cutdown, making sure we have enough black sources to cast this on turn one reliably, and same with Go for the Throat at two mana. These are also very important when facing those red aggro decks with a slick shot show off, as we need all the spot removal we can get our hands on. And then our mana base has a mix of fast lands, including the new Concealed Courtyard, Blackleaf Cliffs, we've got some of the Innistrad duels entering untapped later, still a couple of pain lands just to kind of round out the mana base, since these can help cast our spells early but still enter untapped later in the game, and then a couple creature lands sprinkled in with the Bivouac and Haunted Ridge as well, and then of course the channel lands offering a bit of utility. And then one basic land in case we need to search it up, going for a swamp since we can't afford to play too many planes when we're trying to cast a double black double red card. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
All right, we're on the draw. This hand is uh, definitely a mulligan. This we can try. And which land do we want to get rid of? We do need double red for Rankle. Double white is less needed. So Sanctum can go. Up against red aggro, so happy to have Lightning Helix, and then Kambal plays well with Wedding Announcement. And Swiss Spears next. Yeah. So that hits us for two. Opponent could be holding up an instant to enable Prowess, which will make the Lightning Helix less effective, which is a reason to just play the Plunder, or we can just Helix the Etching of Kumano, which might be better. And then maybe if they tap out, we can take out Swiss Spear. Godric will enter the battlefield as a 4-4 with Celebration. So that one, sadly, I cannot take out right now. And then I have to play Kambal. Hope to block the etching. Monstrous Rage would be pretty bad for us. It's going to be an Ancestral Anger on the Slick Shot. And Swiss Spear once again enabling Celebration. So we take 8 in the air. Alright, can play a pair of Plunders and hope they can't keep getting in with the Flyers or Wedding Announcements. Make an extra token, gain some life as well. I think I gotta go for wedding announcement here. Just to start gaining the life right now. Button goes all out. Okay, that worked out. And a Lightning Helix was an excellent draw. They might have another Godric in hand, so I'm not in a hurry to Lightning Helix it. Can kind of wait and see if they maybe go for another Ancestral Anger. I can respond. Just to show off packing in for one. I don't think I pulled the trigger yet. I'll just be patient on the helix. And then we can start building up our mana in case we find the uh, Iganjo Uprising. And for now we'll pass it back. Announcement transforms, growing the team. And Kambal is keeping us alive. And if we make the opponents make the first move by pumping the slick shot, we can try and remove it in response. But I don't mind taking one. A lightning strike goes face. Sure. Now the problem is if I go to damage or opponent can respond with a uh, play with fire. So I think uh, now I have to go for it. Might have actually had to cast it before Lightning Strike resolved in case their hand was Lightning Strike play with fire. Uh, I will make treasure. Okay, so Kambal's doing work here with double plunder. We actually enabled celebration in our turn. Don't see that every day. But now our opponent's got three treasure. They can sacrifice one to minimize the damage from plunder. But, uh,. I'm not opposed to just taking out Godric and attacking all out. Do they see that they should have sacrificed the treasure? They don't. But yeah, even if they save themselves two damage, they're still pretty dead. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, sure, we can try this. If Plunderer can make a treasure, we're off to the races. 
playing Kambal, ramping out Archangel with Kicker. Aligned is good. Facing black whites could be control, could be a life gain deck. Alright, we do get to make a treasure. And then, yeah, wedding announcements also an option since it's less susceptible to a removal spell. Although I wouldn't mind getting Kambal going either. And since we have a backup, it's not a disaster if they remove it. So maybe start by attacking, and then if our opponent takes out Plunder, we play Kambal. If not, I'll go for wedding announcements. And hope they don't have enchantment removal specifically. Alright, shoot the Sheriff, yeah, unable to take out our Plunder since it's a rogue. So that's why Go for the Throat still has its moments. Although, that being said, Steel Serve doesn't die to Go for the Throat. And then an extra treasure could enable a doubly kicked Archangel of Wrath versus play Kambal and then another Plunder. And then Kambal also will trigger off the Wedding Announcements, draining the opponent for one. Yeah, maybe we can wait on Archangel for an extra turn. So play Kambal. Plunder. And I guess Steel Seraph also contributes towards the Plunder, so they might take three. Other opponent, of course, will get to untap with a lot of extra mana. So we'll see what they can come up with. It's gonna be Shrouded Shepherd. So this might be the Black-White Bronco deck. Still missing the namesake card, and I guess we have to watch out for the uh, shadow, which becomes cheaper the lower the opponent's life total. Shoot the sheriff capable of taking out Kambal, just an advisor. And then opponent plays Shepherd, can pump Seraph, gain lifelink. Okay, so next turn I could still take out Steel Seraph with Archangel, while the plunderers keep attacking. I think I still make all the treasures here. Opponent actually chose Vigilance so they could keep Steel Serve back, but it actually plays out better for us. Now I guess they only have the two artifacts, but needed to clear the 3-3 three, three so we could attack. And yeah, opponent's taking a lot of damage. And we can maybe close out the game with Kambal triggers. Opponent says good game. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, Keeper. Helix into wedding announcements. And then Purveyor can be a pretty large blocker for aggro decks to get past as well. So currently have pretty smooth mana up until turn 4. We'll need a second red for Rankle. So our opponent red green. Gonna see some pump spells. Monstrous Rage, step 1. And hopefully they tap out so we can safely Lightning Helix. And there was weird timing on the play with fire. Maybe they were worried about uh, cut down, I guess. Now I'm just gonna main phase, take out Swiss Spear. So we don't have to worry about prowess. And our opponent might be out of creatures now, which is sometimes the risk of those decks. We'll get a wedding announcement going. Don't mind if the token gets removed. I see questing druid makes sense. Finding lightning strike swiss spear, so pretty nice find for them. Although blood vial purveyor should stabilize us nicely. They will run out questing druid. So this turn is a little bit less explosive, but they are building towards the future with the Questing Druid, which might be able to eventually attack past the Purveyor. Gumball was a nice pickup, although for now still play the Vampire. And then next turn Gumball with a Wedding Announcement could be pretty fun. Also quite good with a Purveyor. And pretty much every other card in hand. We built a deck around it after all. Swiss Spear attacks. That's brave. 
So do they have like double giant growth here? Yeah, I mean, I guess if they do, it's fine to flush those out. Could also just chump with a token and their opponent just lets damage happen. Now let's let those pump spells be cast. All right, just lightning strike plus something else. Maybe could have considered double blocking the Swift Spear, but nope. Trade still happens. All right, that's fine. Opponent's got a 4-4 Druid, but I'm pretty comfortable here going into the late game. So go for Kumball. End of turn, get a token, gain some life. And then the Aganjo Uprising could be a nice finisher for us. Even if it doesn't win the game on the spot, it will leave us with a lot of extra tokens, and then especially with Wedding Festivity pumping them up, we should be able to get there. Although right now Rankle looks quite strong with her opponent only having one creature, so that might be the play. And then this can make them sack as soon as it deals damage with first strike. Could work out poorly if her opponent is holding Witch Stalker Frenzy, because then they could have taken out Rankle before first strike damage. And then we can choose all three modes here. Alright. Rankle gives him a treasure, which also triggers Kambal, which drains the opponent. And with the last mode on Rankle, all our damage is improved as well. So a nice kill out of nowhere, using some underappreciated cards in standard. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with uh, Keeper. Got some early removal, and then Skitter into Purveyor. Well, let's see what we're up against. Swamp. And uh, seems like they have a one-mana play. Tiny Bones joins up. Yeah, probably get rid of the uh, Lightning Helix. Go for the Throats, more likely to take out cards like Shieldred. It's going to be the case. Opponent making a skeleton, so could be a skeleton synergy deck. In which case, their payoffs could be Gisa at 5 mana, which is a reason to hold Go for the Throat. Although, if they just play a bunch of smaller skeletons and corpses of the lost, then I may as well take care of the token now before I take more damage from it. Yeah, don't love it. So, in hindsight, Lightning Helix would have worked out a little bit better. Drew another one, anyways. Now they can sacrifice this to get whatever they want next turn. Mills Archangel would have been a reasonable draw. And shoot the Sheriff takes care of Lord Skitter. How much do we care if Tiny Bones hits us? Yeah, it's kind of annoying if they get a Lord Skitter going. So, might have to take a turn off casting Lightning Helix, but at least we can cast a second one. Actually, what I should have done is attack first, since there's a small chance our opponent's holding a second Tiny Bones, in which case they might take the trade, and then uh, I could have played Purveyor instead. But seemed unlikely. Alright, opponent is going to tutor probably the corpses. We don't get to find out, since it's a hidden tutor effect. Gisa would also be quite good, and Helix is not an answer to it. But uh, maybe Purveyor Beatdown can get there. They seem to have another Shoot the Sheriff, yep. A land Gisa. Nope, Corpses of the Lost. Is that probably what they tutored for? So future skeletons also get plus one power and haste. And hopefully this purveyor can stick around. Bone on this card's cut down. Surprised they're still playing out their land. I guess they can use Sandstorm Verge to attack past our 5-6. And now plunder the draw. 
So taking out a token does not let them descend, so I'm still fine to Lightning Helix in their turn, potentially. And now Unlicensed Hearse, that's acceptable. Yeah, holding those lands might have been better for those blood tokens. Since discarding is part of the cost, now they're just unable to get rid of it, and Purveyor's gonna hit harder, and then Plunder does as well. So don't mind giving them a treasure. And these both trigger. And yeah, that's lethal, so had they been able to sack the blood token, they might have gotten an extra turn onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a Keeper. A little slow to get going. Wedding Announcement doesn't provide the most immediate impact, but uh, if we're up against a grindier deck, I'm pretty happy to have these. Although Double Mountain points in a different direction. At least Lightning Helix should be good. Opponent plotting the show-off already. Alright, well, we've got multiple instant speed answers to it. A Lightning Helix may be less reliable. Opponent plots another show off. Well, that's one way to get around instant speed removal. So now I have to decide if I tap out for wedding announcement and potentially take a ton of damage, or if we uh, keep up removal, hoping they don't have more cards to plot. I think I get something going here. Could also be Lord Skitter, although that one dies easily to a Lightning Strike. With an extra black mana, we have access to Purveyor. But uh, yeah, I think we go for it. So definitely showcasing the power of the plot mechanic in this case. Right, Monstrous Rage, enable the ability. And a play with fire. Right, it's a lot of damage, not lethal. And now we can helix the uh, show off with the monster roll. And even take out their other creature as well. Playing the Purveyor to block is an option, but I think I just want to gain the life in case they have more burn in hand. So, lucky to draw the land. Lucky that our opponent stuck on two lands as well, otherwise we might have just died last turn. And Lightning Strike goes face. And we're gonna have to go for the throat here. Can't play chicken. Or a bird wizard. Alright, we're at three. That to another lightning strike. I ganjo uprising pretty far from presenting lethal, so blood vile purveyor might be my best move. Although I guess what we could do is by attacking with two tokens, we get to draw a wedding announcement, and I could potentially draw another lightning helix as an out to an opposing lightning strike. So I would need to leave myself with two mana, and I guess if I play another announcement I get two draws, but then I also don't have any blockers in case I just play a random haste creature on the ground. So it's a tough balancing act. So let's assume they don't have a lightning strike, what's the fastest way to present lethal? I guess we'll uh, play the Purveyor. Can also maybe block another Slick Shot. So we're not drawing towards Lightning Helix. And didn't get there anyways. So are we dead to Lightning Strike? Opponent plotting Demonic Ruckus and now Adversary. Well. Luckily, they weren't able to cast it right away, otherwise this gaining mass would have killed us. So now we have to do some math. Purveyor actually attacks for 7, thanks to the blood token. So if I Iganjo Uprising for 3, then we get 3 menacing 3-3 three, three Samurai. Opponent will get 2 of them. So they could double block one of these and block a human. Uh, which means we still get in for 6, 7, 8, plus 7, 15. So I don't think it's quite lethal. So instead we'll just go plunder 
I guess we die to Ruckus if they have a flyer anyway. So no point playing around it. Can play another wedding announcement, although this one won't make a token. So it's safer to keep an extra blocker back then and actually make a token. And then next turn we should have a lethal with all the extra creatures we're making. Alright, opponent's gotta go digging, so they didn't have lethal yet. We're also dead to a card like Godric, since they can enable celebration. Now our opponent's just going for the redraw of Demonic Ruckus to try and top deck Lightning Strike, so that's what it boils down to. If I could block Adversary without destroying it, I would, but in this case we cannot. And then may as well triple block in case of Monstrous Rage. So I think they're just going for... A draw off Demonic Ruckus, hope to draw Lightning Strike. Or maybe they already have a play with fire and one damage is enough. It looks like her opponent may have disconnected. Maybe not realizing that they still had an out if Demonic Ruckus draws Lightning Strike. And there's a blood token for a redraw as well, so they actually get a few more looks at it. Alright, damage happens finally. And are we dead? It's gonna be redraw with a blood token. Alright, final draw for Lightning Strike. Would be an epic top deck. And it's just an adversary. Alright. So they should be pretty dead here. And we can close it out with an Iganjo Uprising. Alright, her opponent now definitely has disconnected. But uh, yeah, we'll get there in the end. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not amazing, but functional. We'll have to take a bit of damage off our pain lands initially. Facing blue-black. Okay, so not a whole lot of action in the early turns. Intimidation campaign. Okay. So our opponent's a criminal. Doesn't seem like I'll be channeling Iganja anytime soon, so I can play it out here. And yeah, against a mid rangey deck, wedding announcement should be good. Opponent will make us discard with the investigator. Cut down can go. And then go for the throat is currently our answer. Although we could also just play a purveyor, and that's likely getting removed. And then next turn, Rankle and Torbran could line up pretty well to answer Investigator. It's a bit more mana efficient than just casting a go for the throat. Opponent passes. Okay. Um, so if I play Rankle, I imagine it's getting removed, but I think I still go for it. Alternatively, we can Lightning Helix Investigator keep up go for the throats. Ah, let's go for Rankle. These two attacks, so we can draw with Wedding Announcements. And Otawara to bounce Purveyor. Opponent also making an extra clue token, that's nice. But uh, each player will sack a creature now. Could have also opted to make an extra treasure. To maybe help uh, double kick Archangel. But uh, when our opponent's drawing extra cards with Intimidation Campaign, I'm kind of hesitant to give them more mana. Virtue takes out our token. Possible they were missing red mana so far. So we can replay Purveyor, play a tapped land, next turn maybe kick Archangel. Yeah, that seems reasonable to me. We can also use Rankle to set up a more powerful Archangel of Wrath. That's actually tempting. So let's see what happens if we attack first. So if Rankle connects, then using that last ability, 
we can let our Archangel deal more damage. But opponent's gonna take care of it. So in that case, we'll stick to the plan, play Purveyor. Alright, opponent going for a Virtue. So, they will be reanimating creatures next turn, including my own Rankle and Torbrand, potentially. Although, the Archangel can still block it. They might just go for Investigator. But yeah, we're close to dealing lethal here. Especially with Iganjo Uprising, can cast it for X equals 5. So, we would get 5 3 threes with Haste and Vigilance. Opponent would get 4. So they can still block, but um, they're not going to be the best blocks out there. Versus play Archangel, although Archangel is a good way to clear the tokens from Iganjo Uprising as well. So I kind of like that idea. Cast this for 5. Smash. And that's a lot of damage coming across. Points at 4, so now Archangel could be lethal by itself. They do get back Rankle. And now with 3 steps ahead, just to cycle, maybe look for a Sweeper. And a Harvester. Would have been pretty effective without Wedding Festivity in play. And now sweeps the opponent's own board. Yeah, this sweating announcement made all the difference this game. And our opponent explodes, don't even need to show them the Archangel. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with lots of generous plunders. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll uh, try it out. The extra mana will come in handy to uh, get Rankle going. Facing turn one officer, so maybe the classic white aggro deck. Or maybe just uh, red white tokens with a slightly different build. Although it appears to be mono white so far. Okay, so plunder can attack. The treasure will help enable warden as well, but for now I'm gonna prioritize deploying more creatures. And then next turn make three treasure tokens. And of course the plunder is also quite good at multiples since the ability will become more powerful. Now they can sink additional mana into the adversary. But we've got an answer lined up. Alright, opponent fully tapping out. They might be underestimating how much damage plunder is going to deal next turn. So each one now attacks for 5. And then, by the way, we also have a Rankle and Torbrain. Which can increase our damage output even more, so this might just be game. Can choose every mode if we'd like. But yeah, this is already lethal. And then we still had the mana to uh, go for the throat if needed. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And sure, we can keep some early removal. We'll need a second black source for Purveyor, and then both black and red mana for Rankle. Iganja being the only non-black or red producing land in the deck. And uh, Sundown Pass into Courtyard. Would have preferred to face aggro when holding double lightning helix. This might be more of a control deck. Eh, never mind, maybe multicolor legends. So happy to helix. And Kambal's a decent draw, especially with Purveyor next turn. Hope it can stick around. Arona is acceptable. And play purveyor. So now as soon as they cast a spell, 
They trigger Purveyor, which in turn triggers Combal. Probably could have tried to attack first, there's a chance they would have taken two damage since Rona is pretty important to them. Alright, Tiny Bones triggers Rona. And we each get a Blood Token. Don't think our opponent's going to be making many other tokens themselves, otherwise Kambal can also uh, essentially copy those for us. Kambal down. Well, we got one trigger out of it at least. And uh, we could play Rankle and Torbrain, although there's not a creature I actively want to sacrifice. So we might be better off using a Lightning Helix on Rona, although then Tiny Bones gets to attack, steal our Kambal. How bad is that? I guess it's not a disaster if we can follow up with Rankle and Torbrain. So, step one, maybe attack. See if they want to sack a blood token to minimize the damage. They don't. Could also keep up Igancho as an answer to Tiny Bones and not deal with Rona right away. So we have a couple options. Yeah, maybe I let them keep Rona. They don't seem to be actively wanting to loot, so their hand's already good, so that kind of reduces Rona's effectiveness a bit. So yeah, they didn't even loot end of turn. Now I guess we do have to worry about Plaza of Heroes, potentially protecting one of their legendaries, but opponent main phasing Artai. So that happens. Now they want to loot. So they'll be taking out the Purveyor. We get to draw. Tiny Bones is not a priority this turn. But it's easier to use Iganjo now and then keep Helix for later, I think. Ooh, Archangel. Well, that's a pretty clean answer to both Tiny Bones and Artai. If I can double kick, which requires me to maybe play Iganjo. So yeah, I guess we just Helix Rona and call it a day. Could also go for a more aggressive line where we just try and go face with all our burn. They still have to pay for mana, so that's not happening. Yeah, let's clean up here. Okay, so we're back in the driver's seat. Still have a blood token in case we need it. Ooh, Slogurk, that's a scary one. Although no channel lands in graveyard to get back. And another Kambal. So we could Rankle and Torbrain, attack, and then make each player sack a creature. They could still maybe use a blood token to discard a land and get two of them back. That leaves us in a decent spot. And then we can select all three modes here, basically. So Archangel also deals two additional damage. Next turn, Kambal could also synergize with Rankle, making additional treasure. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand is not amazing. If Plunder survives and we draw third land, we can cast maybe a Purveyor on three. Yeah, I mean, it's sketchy. We'll need a third and fourth land for sure. But is it bad enough to mulligan? I think I'll try it. On the play, plunderers may be a little bit more likely to give us a treasure. Opponent on red aggro with turn one Swiss spear. Archangel's gonna be great if we can get to it. Do they have a play with fire? They seem to have it. No, Ancestral Anger. Okay, so we can slam down a Blood Vile Purveyor for starters. And that's going to be a nice roadblock until we build up our mana for Archangel Vrath. And 
And then we've got spot removal aplenty. Still gonna keep attacking with a plunderer, even though there's a chance they can finish off purveyor with an attack and some burn spells or pump spells. But um need to keep this mana engine going for us. Alright, then there's a show-off. It's another reason why Purveyor is pretty well positioned. Blocking those flying creatures. If they attack, it sort of implies maybe a monstrous rage, which could still trade show-off for Purveyor. If they monstrous rage on the Swift Spear, however, it only goes to 5 power, so yeah, let's block here. And then we've got to go for the throat for the show off. So our opponent trying to get in as much damage as they can. Which, yeah, could work out if they have a bunch of burn spells in hand. Although there's still the Archangel. For now, I'm a bit more worried about containing the slick shot. So could just sit on double go for the throats. Maybe Plunder can keep attacking. With three tokens, it deals quite a bit of damage. We were somewhat close to a lethal, since Purveyor would have attacked for seven. Demonic Ruckus, I have a response. Otherwise they get to draw a card. Now the Ruckus was never on the battlefield in the first place, and our opponent concedes. Sweet, so we got to see this uh, Mardu Kambal deck in action. Definitely on the jankier side of things, but if you're facing aggro, just having some early removal, then it doesn't really matter how you end up stabilizing and closing out the game. And a card like Blood Vile Purveyor as a 5-6 flyer lines up pretty well against a slick shot and then happens to synergize well with Kambal. So that's one way to get there. But uh, yeah, I've enjoyed kind of the more subtle synergies in this deck, like the uh, Plunder with Purveyor and all the artifact tokens we generate. And then of course Kambal plays quite well with every card in the deck. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.